If feelings are outside consciousness, let me stop you right there. Nothing is really outside consciousness. Look at your own experience. When you feel a burst of pleasure, a flash of pleasure, you feel a flash of pleasure. Isn't it something that you feel in your awareness? Doesn't it come in your awareness? Does it exist outside and then your awareness goes and contacts it and reveals it? No. It's something that arises in your awareness. Okay. It's not outside your awareness. All feelings, all thoughts, all images, everything that we experience is in our consciousness basically. Gaurapada denies the external existence of things. Now, that's one thing. So bliss to be experienced must be experienced in consciousness. If there is no such thing as there was a great deal of happiness but I did not feel it. How can you say there is such a thing? There was a lot of happiness in my mind, I didn't feel it. If you don't feel the happiness, there was no happiness. Oh, my mind is very sad but I, I'm okay, I don't feel it so I'm okay. Then you are not sad. There is no sadness there at all. Feelings are always, they have to be directly illumined by consciousness to have any existence at all. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. Ca feelings cannot exist like this thing separately from me. If I see it there, if I don't see it, it's still there. No, not like that. Feelings must be directly experienced to even exist. So, that's one thing. But the bliss aspect of consciousness, when you say ananda, it does not mean a feeling. That very infinitude of consciousness, it is immortal consciousness, immortal existence. This infinite existence consciousness, this itself is called ananda. You see, what is misery? It is a limitation. Misery comes from limitation. The Upanishad says, nalpe sukham asti. There is no real joy in the limited. Bhuma eva sukham. The infinite alone is bliss. So this very infinite nature of ourselves as consciousness, that itself is bliss. Now that is recognized in objects outside. Something which I like, when I experience it, it gives me a flash of pleasure. That pleasure which I see outside is actually the same ananda which is inside. It's just reflected like a little, Shankaracharya says, like spray from an ocean. The ocean is inside you. What you experience outside as happiness or bliss is a spray from the ocean. It's like foam from the ocean, which is already inside you, which is you, not inside you, it is you yourself. The example which Sri Ramakrishna gave of the dog, which buried a bone, and would dig out the bone and chew on the bone, it's an old dry bone. It would cut its inner lip and blood would flow and the dog would taste it and say, oh, what a tasty bone. <laughs> it's, it's tasting itself, its own blood. In the same way we are tasting our own ananda in food and drink and music and science and relationships and all of this outside in success in all the things which give us euphoria outside all that euphoria, the joy comes from within and that's always there no, misery is an obstruction of that okay. see that experienced joy when you want to experience it it must be in the mind if you're in deep sleep, you can't experience that, the, that particular joy of eating a cookie or something like that. So you need the sense organs, you need the cookie, you need the mind. All of that together gives you a flash of pleasure. That comes from within and is experienced as a movement in the mind. When that is obstructed, you get a feeling of pain or ple uh, of, of misery. That's what misery is. Misery cannot exist without the mind. Pleasure also cannot exist without the mind, but the bliss itself which you are, that exists without the mind also. It's like this. Um, I use a mirror and I see my face. The reflected face in the mirror is like the bliss, of, like the pleasure we experience in the mind, in the world. And the original face is like Ananda, the Satchidananda, the real nature of the Atman. Now see the difference. To see the reflected uh, face, I need a mirror. To experience joy in the world, I need the mind. That ex reflected face depend depends a lot on, on the mirror. Convex mirror, concave mirror, your face will look funny. Right? 
Similarly, depending upon the experiences you have in the world, you will get different grades of pleasure or joy. But it's the same joy within which is being reflected outside. Another thing, the reflected face comes and goes with the mirror. You have the mirror, reflected face. No mirror, ref original face stays all the time. Similarly, the ananda, the bliss you get in the world, the same ananda is reflected outside in a vritti of the mind, movement of the mind that comes and goes. Not only comes and goes, it is subject to increase and decrease. The reflected face can be beautiful, can be nice, as good as your original face, or worse, depending on the quality of the mirror. It's reflected in one way in a pool of water, reflected in another way in a broken mirror, reflected in another way in a dusty mirror, reflected in another way in a shiny mirror, in a platinum mirror, reflected in different ways. Depending on the medium of reflection, it will keep changing. It's subject to increase and decrease, coming and going, superior or inferior. Original face, just the same. Ananda, pure bliss, your, your real nature, always unchanging. And last, most important feature. The reflected face is seen, original face is not seen. What you see is a reflection of the original face. The original bliss, ananda, your real nature, is not an experience. Vivekananda said, look how profound his comment. It's not that it is happy, it is happiness itself. What is happy? The mind becomes happy when it's reflected there. So, that ananda reflected in the mind is the pleasure you get in the world. Comes and goes, increases and decreases, and it is an experienced ananda. The bliss, the original Satchidananda, it does not come and go, it does not increase and decrease, in fact it is infinite, it's limitless. And it's not an experienced ananda. All anandas are experiences or limitations of that one, but in itself it's not an objective. Like, who will experience it? It's itself the experiencer. You say, oh, if I don't experience it, then what good is it? The next question. <laughs> it's like saying, if I can't see my original face, what good is it? What you see is a reflection. Once you realize it's a reflection of my original face, your desire to continuously keep reflecting it in a mirror will disappear. You will not feel that, oh, if I don't reflect it in a mirror, it's gone. No, it's not gone. It's always there. It does not depend on the mirror. The mirror depends on it for reflection, reflecting the, uh, forming the image. Right? Once you know it's my original face, it's always there, you will not feel like reflecting it always. Similarly, once you know that you are Ananda, you will not feel that if that happy feeling in my mind is not there, so I'm unhappy. You will not try to keep reflecting it in your mind. I will try to enjoy this, eat that, meet that person, go there, this vacation, that selfie. Yeah. <laughs> you're continuously trying to get that ananda you realize you are that infinite bliss there will be no particular effort that I will try to get these various experiences to get ananda from myself you may or you may not once that effort ceases you will find mind is suffused with bliss sukham atyantikam yattad Buddhi Grahiya Matindriyam, this is in the Gita. In Samadhi, in the deepest meditation, you get the limit of bliss. The, the, the highest possible bliss suffuses your mind. But it's not something that you get through sense organs. Buddhi Grahiyam, it is experienced internally. More than this, you'll have to experience it for yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.